Hello, this is Carrie Fell. Welcome to my studio. Hi everyone, we're back in the dye studio and we are going to use the crock pot again and do some crock pot dyeing. So today I'm just going to take three primary colors and we are going to layer the dry powders in with the yarn in the pot, add water and let it do its thing. We're going to see how the colors mix all on their own without me making it happen. As usual, I'm dyeing warps. I have two warps soaking here in cold water, no acid right now. And I have one warp that is the four ply wool that I like to use all the time in uh, my weaving. And the other one is Harrisville Shetland. Uh, they're both 100% wool. So we're just giving a good soak here in the cold water. I'll add it to the crock pot once they're completely soaked through. The dyes that I'm going to use for my primary colors are Rhodamine Red, so that's my magenta color, Turquoise, that's Cyan, and Yellow, which is my yellow. And uh, these are the CMYK colors and uh, I've used them before in uh, liquid form. I've turned them into liquid form and squirted them all over a, a warp and it made a myriad of colors. They were wonderful. So uh, I know they work well together and they will create uh, an entire rainbow. So I'm gonna uh, put my respirator on and then the process of putting the yarn in the crock pot and adding the dyes are all going to happen uh, together as I layer them up. Here's what I wear when I work with dye powders. This particular respirator filters out particles. So this could be quite the challenge, I think. Because I haven't done this before. I'm going to be using a palette knife, which I stole from my painting supplies, and that's what I'm going to be lifting the dye powders out with in order to drop them in the crock pot. There's the dyes. I'm muffled now. I do have my respirator on. The dyes are going to be over here to the side. I'm going to just move them out of the way so I don't accidentally drop any liquid into them. Two warp chains for each that will go together. All right, so I'm going to spread this out. Whoops, try not to bump the camera. Spread it out in the crock pot and then drop a little of the dye powder. want it to be a sprinkle. Oh, that's right. This is the blue. I thought I was putting red on because it looks red in the container. I forgot. That's a warp falling. I forgot that the uh, turquoise looks reddish in the powder form. Because my voice was muffled and I was making lots of uh, other random noises by knocking off the palette knife and making loud clinking noises. I'm just going to do a voiceover. I've sped up the footage here. What I'm doing is just continuing to add the warps and the dye on top of each other as I go around and around. There's no acid in the water yet or in the yarn. So what I'm hoping is that the dye will move around that when I add acid water at the end that the yarn will float up and the colors will mix in the pot and then give us a whole range of rainbow colors. I'm hoping to get a full range of colors 
I'm hoping that some of the primary colors will still be there and that will get a good mixture. So some oranges and greens and purples, those are the secondary colors and maybe even some tertiary colors. Yellow is the lightest color and it tends to get swallowed up by the others um, most easily. So I'm adding a bit more yellow than the other colors, hoping that we'll still have some yellow left at the end. I'm also guessing that the colors on the top will move down through the yarn and that the bottom might have some browns and the top parts may stay in their individual colors. That's my guess. We'll see what happens. Okay, I just moved it onto this uh, front left part of the stove because uh, that burner doesn't work. And I'm keeping my respirator on because there's still a uh, dye powder sitting on the yarn that's still in powder form. So this is water with uh, citric acid in it. Water is still cold because I want the dye to move around a bit um, before it strikes. Yarn is floating slightly. Okay, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to leave the yellow like that. Yes, I'm going to leave it like that because I think when the water gets hot, things will sink and that yellow might get a chance to strike. And I'll make sure it uh, goes below the water level uh, eventually. So I'm going to put the lid on it. I'm going to plug in the crock pot and turn it on. I'm going to put it on high to start. And uh, we'll see how it goes in a little bit. I'll come back and check it in 20 minutes, half an hour. I've had this plugged in for about half an hour, so it's starting to steam a little bit under the lid. And there is a ton of color in there by the looks of it. I did push the yarn under the water so the yellow is now green and not yellow so there's a good chance that there's going to be no yellow um, in this dye color. Uh, we're seeing on that pink tag, that's where I write um, what the warp is. Each warp has a little tag saying how many ends and how long it is and that sort of thing help me keep them straight. But uh, it's starting to warm up. The water um, is throughout and the color is throughout by the looks of it so I don't know what's happening underneath I'm not going to touch it I'm just going to let it go so we'll leave it uh, for a few hours it's sitting on high the plan is for the color to clear completely we don't want to see any color in the water we want it to all be in the yarn so that's the plan and we want it to be multicolored, uh, not a mud brown. So we'll see what happens. We'll check it again probably in an hour or two. So this has been, oh, maybe two hours since we started this. I am going to move it around a little bit. The point being to uh, dissolve any uh, powders that might just be sitting there uh, between the layers and not yet dissolved. So just a little bit of poking and prodding. I think there's you know, a little bit of purple in the water, but I don't think there's. it's going to make a big difference if I poke it too much. So yeah, just to dislodge any little bits that might just 
be sitting there maybe in an air pocket. So I'm going to put the lid back on, give it some more time. It's not really, uh, it's not really steaming yet. It's getting there. I mean, it's steaming, but it's not bubbling. So it's been a few hours. And the pot is bubbling. It is on high. So I'm going to try not to agitate it too much. I'm really curious to see what it looks like underneath, but I'm not going to flip it or anything. We're just going to leave it because it's quite hot. I'm going to shut it off and going to leave it overnight to cool down in the crock pot. Uh, that should make sure that the water is completely clear. It's still looking slightly purple, I think. Which isn't a surprise because uh, rhodamine red and turquoise both uh, do take their time absorbing and I find that if you leave the yarn in the pot uh, to get cool that the rhodamine red and turquoise will absorb that way. So I'm not going to poke around. I'm going to put the lid on and unplug the crock pot and tomorrow we'll come take a look at it. I'm really curious to see what's underneath, all the way down in the layers. Okay, my camera seemed to have frozen there for a bit, so I don't know how much we got, how much we missed, but I pulled out the first two uh, chains and noticed that it is mainly blue-green with little bits of purple showing down the length. That's the Harrisville Shetland. And now we're dipping in for the, the foreplay. Ah, okay, little, maybe a little bit more yellow showing in this one. The colors are a little more distinct. Ah, it's changing down the length too. So sort of a greeny brown where the yellow must have been sitting, but overwhelmingly blue, blue-green. Some nice purples in here. Oh look, the color didn't strike everywhere at the bottom. I thought color would run down and the bottom would have more color than the top, but that's not the case. We have more distinct colors at the bottom with some light pink, some areas that didn't get much color at all. See, look here, we've got a little bit of yellow, green, pink. This is kind of what I thought might happen throughout the whole piece, but nope. Just at that very bottom part. Interesting. Very interesting. So I think I may try it again, this time taking it easy on the cyan because, oh my goodness, this is overwhelmingly blue. I'm going to try it again with lots of yellow. I love the, the color variety that's happened here. There's a little bit of the cyan or turquoise as it, as it stayed. But the rest, it looks like, is very much... A deep blue green so anyways I'm gonna go rinse this off and dry it and then we'll take another look at what we've got it does look like the water did clear though remember it was looking a little purple uh, when it was still hot so it looks like the dye did clear out of the the water after all so that's good so here's the yarn uh, finished and dried and as we can see it's overwhelmingly blue-green and 
we put approximately equal amounts of the yellow, the red, and the blue dyes. They were turquoise, uh, rhodamine red, which is sort of a fuchsia, and yellow. And we put pretty much equal amounts of each of the dye powders into the crock pot um, as we layered up the yarn but the blue definitely overpowered everything. I might have put a bit more blue in, but um, there's only hints of the pink and the yellow. And those hints are mainly where the yarn was at the bottom of the pot. And uh, see here we've got some of the, just the touch of the original colors showing and even some lighter areas that didn't get uh, too much color in it. I'm guessing that these areas were compressed and uh, from the weight of the, of the wet yarn, and so the dye just sort of sat there uh, and didn't move around too much. And the yarn that was at the top of the pot uh, was looser and the dye color was able to move through the fibers and um, mix and sort of become one one green blue color <laughs> uh, you can see where the where the yellow was added and it's a little brighter green little bit of pink in areas it's a beautiful color scheme it's not what i had in mind when i created it uh, when i when i planned it uh, but it is a beautiful warp. This is the Harrisville Shetland here, and it has fluffed right up and uh, and has a nice feel to it. It's very, it's got lots of loft to it. And this is the four cell four ply here. So this is going to create a very interesting piece because it's going to have a little bit of these uh, lighter, brighter spots throughout it but it's also going to have this very blue green area it's going to be predominantly blue green with just some of these little spots of lighter areas so this will be very interesting um, to weave up let me know what you think I should do with this should I put it in my shop or should I weave it myself I'm very curious to see what it looks like woven up and here are the two warps chained up. So each chain consists of the two separate uh, warp lengths. And we've got the Harrisville Shetland here and the four cell four ply wool here and major blue color happening but some very interesting pops of color, especially in this one. Some light areas that will be interspersed with, with the blues. So I think that'll make a couple of very interesting projects. I think I'll put this one in the shop. Maybe weave this one up myself. Or maybe I'll put it in the shop as well. I am getting quite the collection of, uh, of warps for myself to weave. But let me know what you think. Whether I should weave them or put them up for sale. Of course, you're welcome to check out my shop. I have hand-painted warps as well as finished uh, weaving projects in there. And uh, the links are in the description below. If you'd like to support my artistic endeavors as I do these experiments in yarn dyeing and weaving, head on over to my Patreon. For just $2 a month, you can uh, help me continue to make more videos. Thank you for watching.